Right now at five, these three women, a mother and her two daughters, killed in a shooting this morning. Family members share these pictures of News 4 Jackson. Their 11-year-old niece and granddaughter, she was inside the home at the time of the shooting, and she called the police. It's still hard for us to wrap our, our brains around what occurred that would lead to such an incident in our community, I which bet. we're not familiar with these things. These are things we watch on TV. Not familiar with this in Jacksonville. The Bradford County Sheriff's Office arresting this man, 46-year-old Johnny Brown. He's charged with three counts of second-degree murder. The sheriff's office saying that this started with an argument between Brown and the 11-year-old's grandmother, uh, Quinny K. Robinson. Brown told police Robinson's two daughters joined in with knives. That's when he grabbed a gun and started shooting. This happened God at... Damn. Well, I, I would expect that he gave a statement, you know, at least he talked and said something, right? We at least we, we even though he's lying, he's probably he's probably lying. I mean, we know listen, that he did shoot them. He's probably telling the truth, but at the same time, like they probably didn't join in with knives because he was like, So Brenda, I mean, no, he was probably whooping her ass or something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. And I mean, with these dudes, it could be anything. I hate taking these guys' story on face value. I hate doing that, man. I, but it, just for the sake of that, we, we take the story. But I yeah. normally think in my mind that these guys are lying about details. Yeah, well, so. the, the most important detail, Ike, is that he shot them. And yeah, that's, exactly. that's literally all um, that would He's happens. charged with three counts of second-degree yeah. murder. The sheriff's office saying that this started with an argument between Brown and the 11-year-old's grandmother, uh, Quinny K. Robinson. Brown told police Robinson's two daughters joined in with knives. That's when he grabbed a gun and started shooting. This happened at 2 o'clock this morning on Northeast 17th. Everyone hit the like button. Smash the like button. Smash the like button. Avenue in Lottie. That's where News for Jack's reporter Marilyn Parker joins us live to show us where. You ain't going to see this on the shade room, man. Listen, man, real talk, don't nobody got time to cover all this shit, man. Fucking Deion Sanders' fucking daughter just got pregnant by Jaquez, man. I don't have time for this shit. Some R&B guy. <laughs> Oh, shit, Yo, shit, man. Damn. Yeah, Diddy, man. Well, that's Diddy kind of got another allocation, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, Mick, Nicki Minaj yelled at her hairdresser. No time for this type of stuff, man. He's busting out a new rapper. For so next time you gonna hear from them is when a fucking crackhead son, man, with eighty five felonies gets killed by a cop. This happened in the fallout, Marilyn. Yes, it's still a very active scene. I'm going to have my photographer go ahead and zoom into the focus. You can still see crime scene tape. And the FDLE, they have a sort of barrier blocking right the right side or left side of that mobile home. We actually just saw in the last five minutes someone coming out with bags of evidence, brown paper bags, and someone's actually walking Right across there now, you can see and looks like they're going up that ramp into the inside. So that has been the focus, the focal point of the investigation, because that's that's where it all happened. I spoke with a family member briefly and he was in tears. This has just been such a hard day. You can't even imagine the family members who've come out here and they've just sat in silence, some of them. And there was also a brave little girl who was caught in the middle of all of this, she called 911. And police tell us now the focus is finding her a safe home and also getting some justice for this family. 911, yeah, just your emergency. This is how the 911 call starts. An 11-year-old girl calls from inside this mobile home in Lottie. Hello, 911, can you hear me? There is screaming. You hear multiple voices. Someone is crying. And then the call drops. About 30 seconds go by, and they're back on the line. Hello? Hi, yes, ma'am. This is Jennifer from Bradford County Sheriff's Office. We received a 911 from this phone number. Is everything okay? No. Calm down. Okay, what, what's going on? Come now. Just come. 
When deputies arrived, they saw 46-year-old Johnny Brown standing outside with a cut to his arm. This deputy showed up thinking somebody's just hurt, and in an instant, it turned. He could have did that cut to his arm. Yeah. He could have done that. Let, so, let you know, just to try to, just to yeah. try to, you know, make it seem like I'm that sorry. because, yeah, that because if he had a cut to his neck or his face, I might believe it. But a cut yeah. to your arm, you can do that. Well, well, I mean, look, I, I'm just relieved that the cops didn't hurt one nappy hair on this boy because they would never hear the end of it. No, uh, uh-uh. he, they, they, they just, they probably just walked up and were like, "Sir, what's going on?" with a well, cut to his arm. This deputy showed up thinking somebody's just hurt, and in an instant, it turned deadly. That realized, hey, I'm on something bigger than what I arrived at. And she's there with an individual who, all facts lead, he's the killer. Did he say anything to that deputy when she arrived? He did, but I'm not at liberty to say at this moment. Uh, hopefully we can say that in the near future. Whatever Brown said, the sheriff says, was enough to charge him with second-degree murder and the attempted murder of the 11-year-old who was hit with fragments from the bullet. According to the report, the girl told police Grandpa was hurting Grandma and her two aunts, and Grandpa said they should have stayed out of it. Brown was in a longtime relationship with the girl's grandmother, 49-year-old Quinique Robinson. According to the report, Brown told police they were arguing, then fighting, when Robinson's daughters came at him with nine. I told you they was, I told you he was whooping her ass. <laughs> yeah. I told you. Stayed out of it. Brown was in a longtime relationship with the girl's grandmother, 49-year-old Quinique Robinson. According to the report, Brown told police they were arguing, then fighting, when Robinson's daughters came at him with knives. He goes on to say he got a gun and started shooting towards the three of them. They started running, and Brown says he went mad and kept shooting. He told police he stopped shooting when the 11-year-old entered the room. A very tragic, emotionally charged incident where she lost her grandmother and her two adult aunts. The report says crime scene detectives determined the shots were fired from outside the bedroom into the bedroom where the three victims were found dead. One of the aunts was found in a position indicative of her hiding with a chair pulled in front of her. The sheriff says this is a very big family. They are well known in the area and this isn't easy to accept. It's like an earthquake moving uh, throughout our community because it is so shocking. Not just one person, but three in, you know, three individuals, their lives were taken from them. Mm-hmm. And to us, it's our job to make sure that that individual is held. Hey, uh, let me tell you this, Glider, man. <laughs> These people would be more mad if you were caught on tapes using the N-word or saying, yeah. um, or saying, yeah. um, you know, I'm really tired of these black people in this county. What's like, wrong with these people? It would be more of a longer lasting effect on them. You know, then, then this will be there. This will be something that yeah. they'll get the, the community as a whole, not the family, but the community as a whole will get over in a matter of days. It's held accountable. How often are you all responding to these types of calls in this county? Oh, and domestic violence issues arise just about every day. Most of them are just argumentative. At this level, it's very rare. Marilyn, such a tragic story. Another case of domestic violence. Obviously, we know this is going to be very traumatic for the child who was there. We know these situations have lasting effects on children who witnesses witness things like this. I understand you spoke to an expert about this. I did. I spoke with the executive director of Peaceful Paths, and that is a center who supports survivors, both children and adults, of domestic violence. You know, she told me one of the first messages that she sent to Sheriff Smith this morning was, what can they do to help this 11-year-old, especially when it comes to trauma counseling? I had her explain that process a little more. Take a listen. The biggest thing is to let her know that whatever the situation was, it was not her fault. Um, That whatever was happening in that household, she is not responsible for. um, And that the, the, the path forward is going to involve a lot of healing and looking at what her responsibility is moving forward to herself. 
that the only thing she is really responsible for right now is taking care of herself and finding ways to manage whatever grief she's feeling, whatever fear she's feeling um, about what has happened, what she's witnessed, and what the future holds for her. Dr. Beachy and I spoke about warning signs and what accountability looks like in these domestic violence cases. You can watch our full interview or conversation on newsforjacks.com. And I'm also waiting to hear back from family on the GoFundMe that they are planning to set up. As soon as I have that, we'll post it on newsforjacks.com as well. We're live in Lottie, Maryland yeah, Parker, Channel 4. The local Now, again, to be fair, and I always say this in these cases, I everyone commits these kind of... Yeah, this is domestic at the end of the day. Everyone does that. So I'm not going to be too hard on this, but the, 